today's podcast is about thankfulness and gratitude. Obviously, it's uh, it's um, close to the the holiday that America knows of as Thanksgiving. Um, it's a celebration where the family gets together and just eats a big lunch together and tells each other how much we love each other. So it's always good to see the family. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, you don't need. If you, I'm gonna see your family. We can be your family. Exactly. I think we're creating like we are a family for sure. Star family, whatever you want to call it. Humanity. <laughs> so, gratitude. Um, going along with thankfulness is just basically another term, another energy signature. Um, that different people will resonate with. But uh, so. I would like to start off personally myself by saying that I'm thankful to have amazing, inspiring friends who who will do this podcast with me every week. Uh, been doing it for about four years now. I first started off um, just recording a podcast into my uh. phone without even I didn't have anywhere to put it out, and now I'm here. Like in Shine Time Studios, painting horses and listening to Spaceship Earth play music all the time. And so, guys, I, I am very thankful and, and have a lot of gratitude for you guys. Thank you for you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what I like to talk about on the podcast is um, is more deep maybe controversial to some people topics like uh, ascension or enlightenment um, whatnot and so I did have a few questions for you guys since uh, we are on the podcast we do not have a, a special guest tonight so this is um, gonna be quite a new experience we are the special guest and yes. we do have Nick Melnicki who's been back he's been on vacation. How are you, Nick? <laughs> I'm doing awesome, and it feels really great to be back in the cut with you guys doing yeah. the business. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, thankfulness, gratitude? I'd love to. So, for me, every single day, I just kind of go through in the morning uh, before I get my day started, and I kind of realize where I am and what's going on, who I am. And just give myself, you know, one, two, three things that I'm thankful for, and it just gives me that fuel to really kick butt the rest of the day and stay in that love and that that frequency to just be immune to any kind of external influence to bring me down. So, like, you've been um, in your own personal space, basically, like, uh, not... Um Having a lot of external, you know what I mean, like uh, actually, I've had the most external activity recently than more time uh, before, which is why I've had to do this because I'm, as I open myself more, I'm I'm extremely sensitive, and I noticed I would literally be incapable of doing many things if I didn't have these building blocks really fortified and I, I just you know kind of tried this here or there and then this is what stuck for me and, and made it easier to be myself all the time without needing to recuperate. Hmm. So I see Ashton is uh, twirling a crystal around. Um, does uh, crystals help you with the gratitude and thankfulness? Uh, I'm super grateful for this. Um, I'm sure in subtle ways they help me express gratitude in like their like, individual properties of the crystal, but I mean really like the crystal is like a reflection of your soul and yeah, I don't know. It's just it myths like yeah. Perfect beauty that is like I don't know, it's just, I'm, it's 
<laughs> I like how we all went to grab our pistols before the podcast. Uh, and I'm also very thankful for the tool known as rocks or crystals. Rocks. Um, rocks rock. Yeah. Mine's actually an organite. Hers, yeah, hers is an organite. Organite. Uh, and could you explain a little bit about uh, what an organite is? Yeah, they are resin-made um, kind of like creations, I guess. Or you can make them independent or alter items or just... I carry mine around with me. This one I actually made on my, my grandma's birthday. Her last birthday with her, we made organites. Me and my whole family each made one. And um, you pick crystals that... I kind of pick ones that I feel want to be together because once they're in this resin, they're kind of going to be together forever. And I also put some um, like gold leaf and different aluminums and metals in it because they help conduct energy and um, putting them all together kind of creates like a receiver or just a, a little like, connector of energy pretty much because it's putting all the energy of each of the different types of crystals together and they can activate each other and they're really good healing tools and I just use mine and it keeps me neutralized. Yeah, they're like, organites are my favorite shields. They're, I mean, especially like making electronic music, I'm always on this computer, so I don't, I don't like, feel right. Like, this, help, like, this helps a lot too, I have this big amethyst. That really helps um, citrine, amethyst, black tourmaline, and organite and, um, are really some of the best that protect you from electromagnetic fields from computers and phones. Yeah, I've started taking mine to work with me since I work with computers a lot too, since I saw you keep yours in your laptop a lot. And the one day we all had headaches at work, and I was like, I'm going to take this in because it was in my car charging up because the full yeah. moon was the night before, so it was like supercharged because I do put them out in the full moon um, just like I would crystals because they're just a bunch of super crystals all put together. And um, so I took it in, and I just sat it on my desk, and every single girl that walked by my desk said, hey, what's that thing? It's not even that big. Like, you can see how big it is. It, it's like in the palm of my hand, it's like the size of a quarter. I actually made it in a, um, inside a, like a teaspoon. So it's actually a teaspoon, exactly. Um, and everybody walked by, and then by the end of the day, everybody was in a better mood, and nobody had a headache. So uh, everything was just putting off crazy energies. So organites yeah. are really cool, and I'm trying to make some. So yeah. sure. them in mind. Yeah, sometimes we don't even realize like how great we are from refrigerators, cars, everything that's around us, everything's just like the phone lines, like it's they're pretty much gridlocked into this huge electromagnetic field that's not really resonant with the earth or the human body. So that's why crystals are so good. They like emit this perfect uh, frequency that's um I mean it'll be like lower in the sense that it's like needs to be re-energized or cleansed or cleared, but it always emits that same resonant frequency that's always going to create just new consciousness and new fields for everyone. Mm -hmm. So that's it's so like you bring this into like a grocery store and everyone's you know kind of gets hints of and picks up on the vibrations from just from the crystal maybe being in your pocket. You're, you don't even have to talk to anyone, and you're changing the world in a very subtle but dynamic way. Yeah. Um, Nick also has crystals. Yeah, I did want to jump in real quick and talk about um, this for just a moment. This is uh, one of the keystones, as they call them, basically an organite uh, from 3D, no, Rootwire. Yep. The Michael, what's his name? No, what was his name? Patty. Patty. Yes. Do you know Sponship Enterprise? Yes. Sponship Enterprise. Sponship. Sponship. S P U N. Sponsponbra. I have a really cool karma symbol from them too. Mm -hmm. No, they're really awesome. People. They are. They're very awesome people. But I, uh, they gave me this for free, and I've been wearing it uh, for quite a while, and I try to wear it every day, just because I know those energies are out there, and when when you're when you're doing something that's uh, changing the game, then 
part of the game doesn't want to change and tries to send ways to stop that from occurring. And so wearing one of these uh, keystones could be very beneficial for you if you want to kind of just like create a energetic field around yourself so those energies can penetrate. Um, just the vibration of these stones is, is so high that it's impossible for you to absorb these since, um, you know, atoms, they just, when one atom starts vib vibrating rapidly, then it just spreads throughout all the atoms. And so with that, like, mm -hmm. it's very important to, to have a tool in the physical to protect you and to allow you to, to continue to be in that higher state, in the higher vibration. Yeah, that, I think those are so important for that reason, because they just, like I said, really kind of just hold that one vibration, so if your vibration's off, then you can kind of tap into that. Um, but you can definitely, like, overuse your crystals and kind of overburden your crystals when you're not taking care of them and cleansing them. And you're just kind of putting, like, negative energy filtering it through them, then they get sleepy and then you lose them. And they'll run away or they'll break. Pretty much every time. Yeah, for sure. Thought Nick looked like he had... Nope. Nick's <laughs> in a very meditative <laughs> position right now. <laughs> you want to talk about your selenites? Oh, I would love to. They would love <laughs> me to do that. So selenite is my absolute favorite crystal out of all of the crystals. I have uh, them gridded on my bed. I have two little tiny ones that I like to have in my ears a lot. And the significance of them is, uh, so think of the color white. The white color white reflects everything. And then black absorbs everything. It's like the mother of all colors. Mm. Yes, precisely. So the, the selenite, it can charge any crystal, clear any crystal. It can balance your brain hemispheres. It can defend you from low frequencies. It can enhance your high frequencies. It's basically like a cure-all, do-all, and it really should be implemented um, in any kind of daily little bag of crystals or a wrap or something because it's just it's so beneficial. But what I like it for the most is I'm really um, in the thoughts and in the upper chakras and stuff like that. So wearing them in my ears, it allows that to kind of uh, balance and calm down, and then I can focus my attention and awareness more on the lower chakras so I'm able to exist in this world without feeling like I need to get out and feeling like I need to leave. Right, I like that a lot. It's like that... 3D object to bring like those upper dimensions, like the upper aspects of you, like down to this reality. Yes. So it can make it more bearable to chill with you guys down here with Gaia <laughs> and do the business. <laughs> Man. Uh... But yeah, I mean, I got, check this out Amethyst Cluster. We got nice chunk of. Leucayanite, oh man, all these crystals, I have them next to me when I go to bed. That's my response to that. Thumbs up. <laughs> Thumbs up. Thumbs up. So, Nick, uh, you've been uh, working on a blog, I believe. Did you want to throw a plug into your blog? Uh, yep, it's nickmelnicky.blogspot, and I got some nice little tips on there. I have a quick little third eye training technique that can be used every night before you go to bed. I have some information there to kind of cure a few of the inconsistent truths that people have been throwing around and get you more kind of a streamlined, what is star seeds, what are we here to do, a uh, nice little message from an aspect that I use called Ra. Uh, and and these, these names and these deities, they're more so a just a giant collective consciousness, like the humans have collective consciousness. Um, the deity Ra is actually just a bunch of thoughts and vibrations and frequencies. Oh, kind of What's up? 
Is that from the Law of One material? Uh, I haven't read any of that recently, so I couldn't say. But mm -hmm. I think Ra is That's kind of Law of One material. It's like channeled from this group consciousness called Ra. It's like along the same kind of lines, but that was like a fundamental part of my awakening was finding the Law of One material, and it just had like a big Ra on it, and Ra means light, so it's like the light. <laughs> The light, it burns, said the eagle. <laughs> but yeah, so like, you know, the the eye, and then you got some sweet hieroglyphs down there. But the, the eye, that's that appears when I close my eyes and look through here. I look through that eye. Mm. And uh, it just kind of gets you into that stillness. The, that's, oh, perfect. Crystals and these different meditation techniques and these different focusing of the internal muscles, it brings the mind and the ego into that stillness, into that no mind. And then from there, we can battle with whatever issues we're having, and we'll be much more capable and have a larger capacity to figure out our crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that, that really connects to this whole conversation about gratitude because once you get into that stillness, that space of no mind where you're just kind of like the awareness that is really just aware of everything, you're aware of your, your awareness, that's where your thoughts and your feelings, well, you're not really any of them, you're just experiencing them, you're witnessing all of them. And it brings you into a place of gratitude when you're in that stillness, when you're just kind of watching, like nothing in your head is really affecting you anymore. You're just kind of witnessing it all. Like, you know, when you're just witnessing pain, that's, like Ram Das has said this a few times, it's like, you know, I'm just witnessing pain, you're like, that's not so bad. <laughs> once you're into that, out of your brain, out of your not mind and into your consciousness, that whole energy vibration just pretty much is gratitude, like, one, and that's, I don't know, for me, when I first started waking up, like, gratitude was, like, the foundation of all. I, like, found the law of attraction and, like, the secret, and in that book, it told you to just, like, write huge lists of things that you're grat grateful for, and okay. with every, I just, I just tried to do it all day long, every day, I never heard of anything like that, and it just kept saying, when you're in a state of gratitude, you send out that vibration to the universe, and it gives you more of the same. So when you're con like consciously seeking out things to be grateful for and looking for things to be grateful in your life, the universe is going to tip on that, and then you'll literally attract more things to be grateful for. And yeah. it doesn't ever stop. And... Um, it, it kind of opens the doorways for, like, more miracles, more divinity pouring into your life. Um, like, when I just started being grateful, things, like, magical things started happening to me. So I was like, what is all this stuff? And then I discovered my divinity. I discovered, a, like, it's like you're opening your hands to the world and, like, allowing it to come, allowing it to be, and then allowing it to kind of like open the floodgates of manifestation is I feel like what gratitude really does. If you like if you feel it in your whole body too, like you, you're grateful for your skin and your being and your mind and everything you've ever been through and all the people in your life and you get into that state and you keep remembering that state and tapping into it, then your life will just be awesome. It just floods. Hmm. Um, mm. That uh, makes me well. Yeah, that's like using. Um, well, some people know it as the law of attraction, where you send out that vibration. That vibration just keeps coming back to you, and so when you feel that gratitude, um, there's an exercise that that I used to listen to, and it's only five minutes. Five minutes a day. What you do is when you're breathing in, you think of one thing that you're grateful for. Just one thing. It could be anything. Like, I'm grateful to have a hat. I'm grateful to be breathing. 
Um, and while you breathe in, you just think about that one specific thing. And, then and when you, you breathe out, feel it too. I don't mean to interrupt you, but the key is you have to feel it. You can't just be like, I'm grateful for the Thank lamp. You. I'm grateful for that doorknob. You gotta be like, <laughs> I like <"I'm> it. <laughs> And uh, please continue. The, the second part was actually to feel that vibration of that one thing that you're thankful for. So just breathing in, just saying one thing, breathing out, and feeling that that vibration or feeling that feeling. Um, it's very heart centered, as as Ashton says. It's very heart centered, so it feels really good. And if you just do this for five minutes. Day, like your life will transform. All your problems can can magically resolve themselves, and you just, as um, Mr. Ashen talks about, just it's like observing that you know you're you're taking yourself out of the equation of creating problems for yourself, and instead just witnessing the miracles, and that's really beautiful. Why would you not want to, to feel that and experience it? There's um, actually a book called the, the Magic, I believe, and it's like a sequel to The Secret. And um, one of the, it's like, I think it's seven or more different steps to bring more magic and thankfulness and gratitude and abundance in your life. And one of the things was to create a binder. And I instead of creating a binder, I actually created an Evernote tab because... I can access it on anything. <laughs> yeah, I can put it on my phone. And the the exercise was to write down absolutely everything you could think of to be thankful for it. And to do it for at least twenty two days because twenty two is one of those magical numbers and um generally if you could do it that long and it felt good, you would probably keep doing it. And I believe there's even a podcast on all of attraction radio I've been listening to like all week at work. And they were talking about it again, too, so I'm going to definitely get back into doing it every single time. Um, I do it a lot, but what it was was they wanted you to be thankful for everything. That penny you found on the ground, that bird you saw across your path, literally everything. The, the flower that grew next to your doorstep. It didn't have to be a material object that you received. It didn't have to be even something amazing. Just it could be the clothes you were wearing, the outfit you were wearing that day the spaghetti you were making, whatever, you were supposed to write it down and just literally think about all the things you were giving, given in the physical world, but not necessarily money, because um, one of the big things was to realize that abundance and gratitude shouldn't be put into money so much, and that abundance comes in all kinds of ways. But pretty much just write, kind of like Tutsilo said, was keep everything in in the meditation form, but like actually write it down so you can go back and look at it. When you're having a bad day, you can look at your list and your pages of everything you've done. Because sometimes if you go back three years from now, you might forget that, man, you found 20 bucks on the ground, and that made your day. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that that's a good practice to write down what you're thankful for as much as possible. Even if you can't write down what you did that day, and keep a full journal and just write down what you're thinking before. Right, I used to do that where like I had a dream journal and well someone told me to do this and they said like in, even before I would write my well, sometimes write my dream first since I could get it, but um, just write three things down that you were thankful for to start your day and start your journal off. And for, I don't know, I did it for a while, like I I still don't do it but like anymore really, but just any time you can get into that state of gratitude, you don't, you don't have to be writing it down. It's like it's more than words. It's like this vibration, this state of being that you get into that is also like linked with presence and alignment with like your out external environment. Um, it really just taps into like this love vibration that like. Everyone will, uh, you know, just feel it around you, and in the end, everyone. And it's not really a forced thing, like to, like get out of your head and be like, yo, like I'm grateful for this desk, or like mm -hmm. you might seem like you're forcing it, but the more like 
one of the biggest lessons I've learned is fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. And on the surface, it might seem like kind of a materialistic way to talk about spirituality, but the point is that when you're pretending to be something that you think you're not, you actually are getting into that state of being that you want to be into and attracting it more into your life. So if you visualize yourself doing anything, anything you want to be, um, you know, whether it be um, just having a good day or attracting clients for your business or um, anything, through that visualization process, um, you get into that vibration of that reality, which I personally believe is what it's all about because you align with that reality that's already there and you're tapping into the vibration and then the probability of that happening is actually way greater because of the feeling. And, and in the end, you're just going to want to, whatever image you're imagining, just kind of let it go. Like you want, you're like picturing like you and your new lover. But it's like, in the end, just kind of let that go. Feel the vibration and know that's coming from you. And that's your energy coming forth into the into the into the world, and that's the energy that, in the state of being, that you always want to get a habit of being into because that's what's going to attract what you actually want. Hmm. Exquisite. I think yeah, it's very key to make sure you know what you want to bring into your reality. Um, Sometimes it may seem very hard. Uh, do you feel like contracts kind of interfere sometimes with that? Yeah, sometimes solo contracts interfere with things. Um, because <laughs> you're, you're like being <laughs> grateful for the person. You're like looking past all of their per your, the perceived thought faults that you have of them, and then like nothing changes, and you don't attract anything to be grateful for. But it probably relates to a past life, and it probably um, is so synchronously aligned with your life, you don't even realize that that bad thing is just going to make your life like end up somewhere different and protect you from something else that you might not even know is happening. And then you'll get to, if you're still, if you're using that gratitude, you'll eventually get out of it. The contract will dissolve or whatever. And you'll get to something that's so much more than you had ever experienced prior to that that, I mean, you'll really see how it would be worth it to still be in that state of gratitude for that person while it's happening and being present and seeing love within them, even though, you know, you might not at that time look like really like their presence at all. You might want to punch them in the face. <laughs> but you might not realize that a year from now, once you leave that person's life, like, they might come back into your life and be like, wow, you changed my life. Like, straight up. You, just because you, like, showed me what it's like to be, like, a good person or something. And I think it's always important to see the good in people regardless of what you're experiencing from them, not only for them, but for you, because you you're more likely to manifest the good version of them if you're like seeing the good version of them all the time. Yeah. It kind of makes people want to be a better person if you put that much faith into them. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, viewing everyone in their natural state of being, which is full abundance, full love, full this, full that, everything magnificent, if you envision every human being on the planet as that, they're going to fulfill that eventually. It doesn't matter who they are now, what they just said to you, what they just did to you. They're going to become that simply because you're holding space in your heart for them to be that, because you know that to be true. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta, you got to choose whose energy that, uh, that you end up being around. Got to be very careful that you choose somebody who will see the best version in you and keep lifting you up and keep inspiring you. 
And I feel very thankful that I have surrounded myself with such amazing, inspiring people and gratitude, much gratitude for all that. And everything you guys are saying is so beautiful. And um, just doing this podcast is really special to do it with. Who I'm doing it with is it's a beautiful thing. So it's like Christmas right now. Like this is my Christmas gift for, for myself. <laughs> Merry Christmas. It's Thanksgiving. We're doing a Christmas yeah, I just want to say for a second that um, although I think Thanksgiving is an awesome holiday, I just want everyone to realize that Thanksgiving is based upon a bunch of like European dudes like pretty much murdering a bunch of made Americans. I think that's, that's something we're about to do. I think that's why it's important to put so much good energy out on that day so that that energy isn't resonated throughout history as such a negative event. Maybe maybe we created it in a past life in a more positive way so that we didn't have to remember it that way and we could change it. Because if you glorify the fact that there was war and murder and things taken from people, then people will think that's right rather than thinking that thankfulness is important. Yeah, I hope one day that it's kind of seen as a day to, like, celebrate those Native Americans and celebrate the land and our connection to it then um, instead of celebrating you know pretty much what it has become today but that's why we're here and that's why we're changing things. Mm -hmm. So do you think um, being thankful and sending gratitude and love it could because right now that same Thing is basically happening here. Like all timelines are just perpendicular, and and some of the countries are sending their own warriors into different lands, doing the same exact thing in this uh, in this timeline here. And so I'm asking an open question to everybody, um, if you're listening or any of the hosts. Uh, do you think? Using that gratitude and that law of attraction, we can can bring on the timeline where that doesn't exist anymore, where there is no war, and there's world peace and, and world unity. Yeah, I think so. Um, I've pretty much come across the understanding that there's an infinite amount of coexisting, parallel, simultaneous realities around us at all times. So there's pretty much infinite movies of your life going on at all times and so the movie of where everyone's all happy and it's like more than utopia and everything's like heaven is real right now and it's right here and it's inside you and just because you can imagine it means you're tapping into it already and the energy is here and within you and It's not so much like you have to get there as much as you just have to align with it. And all the beings that are already there will just be waiting for you to arrive. 